Hey guys, what is going on? Carter here. Got a video for you on the Cold Steel Immortal. I like Cold Steel, no bones about it. Always have. They're ridiculous, they're over the top, they're unapologetic, but they do have some really cool stuff going on with them, and they're also, generally speaking, affordable. Um, however, that price point is going up, which I actually appreciate. We'll talk about that more. Maybe I'll do a uh, Cold Steel, why I like them, history overview, blah, blah, blah type thing later on. This video is about the immortal right there. Along with Cold Steel comes over the top names. This is no exclusion to that. Over the top names that look tacky when printed on the blade. That's just how it goes, you know, and they're, they're not really apologetic about it. They don't come up with excuses. That's just what they do. So this is a knife that caught my eye when I got back into knives recently. Um, mainly the blade shape. I mean, look at that thing. It's wider up here more narrow back here. I mean, just wicked looking. Now, this is unapologetically designed as a fighting knife, as a weapon. Cold Steel does that a lot. Um, not all their knives fit into that category. They do have a great array of utilitarian fixed blades and folding blades that actually work really well for just using them out in the field for what they're meant for. But primarily, they're known for their over-the-top fighting knives that they, they don't apologize for. They're like, yeah, we make weapons. Like, that's what we do. And in fact, some of the stuff they make, nobody else does. You know, some of their um, rubberized stand-in replicas and, you know, their, their safe versions of knives that you can actually train with. Like, no, no other major knife company is doing stuff like that. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. You could look at it as dumb, over-the-top. Uh, mall ninja stuff which sure but it's still fun it's still cool and it's it's pretty sweet to think that legitimate martial artists are out there using some of these things and training with them and uh, it's pretty cool but anyways back to this knife so this is a large knife primarily a fighting knife a weapon uh, self-protection if you will but of course it has an edge it has a good edge and it can be used for whatever you want to use it for so let's talk, I'm not going to go over specs, it's printed literally on the box. Um, it's printed literally anywhere that you can pick this up, you can see what the specs are. But it is a large knife, you can see comparing it to a paramilitary 2, it's a nice hefty large knife, um, good blade stock around 3 millimeters thick, it's their standard blade stock they use on their uh, medium large small knives. Uh, this has the wave opener. Uh, tab right here. It does work fairly well with the wave opening. It's not the best because you can see that gap right there. However, it's wide. So as long as you angle it outwards, you're going to catch this lip and it's going to open for you deploy when you pull it out of your pocket if you want to. Uh, that is one good thing about this is it's really easy to kind of decide with a little practice on if you want to deploy it that way or if you want to just pull it out normal. Um, if you want to pull it out normal, chances are you're not going to accidentally automatically deploy it with the wave, uh, which I like because I've had some waves that work more effectively, less effort to get it to auto deploy, but it also will accidentally auto deploy when you don't want it to. So kind of a give and take there um, on what you prefer. It does take a little practice to get this to auto deploy, but once you get it down, you can do it every time or not if you so fit, if you see so fit. However, uh, the... Opening tab is not the most comfortable for manually opening. Uh, you kind of hit this corner right there, it's a little bit sharp. It's not as nice as a uh, regular thumb stud. Um, and on top of that, this particular one isn't the smoothest opening. It kind of hits right here. It's a little difficult when you first do that right here. It's pretty good, nice and smooth, uh, consistent, but there is a noticeable difficulty right here where it actually engages this lock back. That happens with this triad lock. Um, some Colt Steel's super smooth, super easy to open. S other ones are stiffer but consistent or ones like this which are inconsistent where it's really stiff right here and then pretty nice all the way to lock out. Just has to do with the uh, minor details on where the pivot is in relation to uh, the lock bar and the distances and things like that as well as the actual tension on the lock bar. So just minor things, it's nothing huge. Um, obviously, when you're carrying this, you shouldn't really be deploying it a ton so that it would cause an issue. Uh, but if you're playing around with it, you might get a little, your little thumb, you might get sore. 
kind of see I've got an indent right there just from doing this video. Um, so that's a give or take. You know, I prefer the thumb stud because I'm not uh, really big on the wave opening. It's cool to show people, you know, and they say, oh, what's that knife? And you wave it out and they can't wrap their head around how that happened. That's fun. Um, and I guess technically if you are in a defensive situation, it might save you a little time. I don't know. I've never been in one of those with a knife, but maybe that's the case. But I prefer thumb studs overall. So we have, sorry about the rant, we have uh, CTS XHP steel on this one still. Uh, sounds like Cold Steel's moving to S35BM for all their knife steels. To me, I don't really care. I like that it's a premium knife steel. I'm not going to get into the minor details of which one's better because honestly, it doesn't really matter to me. I have so many knives and I actually use them other than minor cutting tasks. You know, I'm not cutting through tons of cardboard where I'm going to notice a difference. I just like knowing I have nicer steel. It makes me feel better. It gives me warm fuzzies. I like it. G10 handle right here. Uh, no liners, no inserts or anything. Just your standard G10 uh, triad lock pin right there. Uh, lock bar like I mentioned before. Aluminum backspacer. Very common in cold steel knives. Uh, it's got kind of this cool uh, texture on the back here. You could use this, I guess, as a glass breaker. Um, don't know how super effective that is. Uh, Aluminum is pretty soft and there's not a uh, carbide bit or ceramic ball or anything there. But uh, I guess it's better than just G10 for using it as a striking device. Lanyard hole right here. One thing that's cool is uh, ambidextrous pocket clip. Just switch it back and forth. You don't have to use the uh, secondary pocket clip they used to include in their knives back in the day. Pop it out on this side, swap it back and forth. Uh, speaking of ambidextrous, another thing Cold Steel is good for is having that. Um, with this opening tab, this is literally just swap the pocket clip and you're a left-handed knife right here. You don't need to buy anything else or, or do any add-ons. It's ready to go. Um, handle, fairly thin, as you can see right there. Um, it feels even thinner with these grooves cut into the handle here. It does give you some good grip. I'm not going to say uh, this is the most ergonomic handle in the world. You are going to have an amazing grip with these grooves. I mean, your pinky just fits right into one of those right there. Uh, so amazing grip. It's not going to slip on you. You have kind of this finger troil going on here, also on the back. However, it's not super comfortable. I wouldn't want to use this for hours of, of a cutting task. Of course, that's not what this is for. Um, but it's not the most ergonomic. The handles... Once again, give and take, it's a little thin to feel super comfortable to me. I have large hands, uh, long spider fingers, uh, not super comfortable. However, being thinner, it does carry better. So, you know, that's up to you. Thicker handle, feels bulky in your pocket, feels better in your hand. Um, thinner handle, this is kind of like right in the middle, right? The, uh, I think it's the Talon, Cold Steel Talon. That one's just all around, a little too thin for me. Feels weird in my hand does carry great because it's so thin, but a little too much. This is right in the middle. Um, it's not so thin that it really bugs me, but it does carry well. Speaking of carrying, pocket clip is great. You don't have that issue with the really aggressive G10 you get on like the SR1, where you might have to make some modifications to it so you don't completely rip up your pants or so that you can actually get it in and out of your pants. Because of these grooves and because it's more or less smooth, you do have some texture there. Uh, it goes in and out of the pocket really well. Uh, pocket clip is absolutely great. Can't make any complaints on that. Really, really cool. Um, so overall, absolutely like this knife. Uh, right now, it's at a really good price point for the materials you're getting, for the size, for the uh, strength of the triad lock. You know, everything involved, the design. Um, you can get these for right now. Brand new, around 100 bucks, um, And that's just really, really cool. This is made in Taiwan. USA Steel, though, I'm assuming they're shipping this over to the knife or possibly, um, I think, I think uh, Taiwan might just have access to this steel now. Um, they probably worked out an agreement. I don't know. I'm not going to theorize on how the steel is getting there, but it is USA made steel. Knife is designed in the U.S., constructed in Taiwan. If you care about any of that stuff, really cool. Really wicked blade. This comes in a tan handle like this or a forest green, I believe, right now are the two offerings. Would be cool if they did uh, kind of more, you know, maybe a blacked out version, black PVD, 
coated blade, black G10, that would be kind of cool. But uh, they don't typically do that. They kind of, uh, part of their pricing model is they have limited variations on their knives. Um, I assume to keep the cost as low as possible because uh, that way they can produce more using the same materials, using the same machining setup, etc., etc. Cold Steel Immortal, really fun blade, large, carryable. Oh, wait, uh, it's not that heavy. Um, for the size, another thing Cold Steel is great for is they make ridiculous, oversized fighting knives that are really strong, but their weight point is always very reasonable. This is not a heavy, heavy knife, mainly due to the construction. I mean, you don't have steel liners, you don't have titanium. Uh, it's just G10 and then a steel lock bar. Uh, so it helps keep the weight down, also gives it really good balance. You can see right there, balance point is about at that finger troil. Yep, balance is right, right here. So they, they feel good in the hand, they don't feel overweighted. Like if you get a paramilitary and you throw some titanium scales on here, really bugs me, it's one of my pet peeves. I love the look of, I'm going on a tangent here guys, love the look of titanium scales on things like this aftermarket scales but it throws the weight balance way off super lightweight blade handle is super chunky you can see this one is even out of the box a little heavy here it does kind of want to fall back a little bit although overall it's still balanced but you throw titanium or copper or whatever on here and all of a sudden it's a hefty handle with a super light blade anyways well balanced lightweight wicked looking great materials great steel Super strong, obnoxious name, obnoxious printing. It is what it is. I like it. It's fun. Let's bring some fun back into the knife world. You know what I mean? Things are getting so serious with titanium and, and collared pivots, which are awesome. Those are awesome. But let's have a little fun with knives again, guys. All right. <laughs> Later.